now the class is reporting. Uh, would the name be listed twice if the two tables are joined on the name? Uh, right, so um, yeah, that's actually a good transition. I was just going to talk about that. Um, so here, I said that a natural join is similar to a cross product, a select, and a project. Um, really, you should add in one more, plus a rename operation. If you do that, then these are equal. It's equal to a cross product, a select, a project, and a rename. So with these four um, sort of lower level operations, um, that's what joins are. Um, you might select different things, you might project in a different way, um, but um, uh, all joins will you know, some sort of combination of this. So um, here we see the cross product. Um, again, that's finding all possible pairings um, in particular, we'll care about the pairings where it, um, something gets paired to itself. Um, here, John getting paired with John. That's, that's what we um, select for. Um, but the cross multiplication gives us all possible pairings. And it also um, here uh, gives us a relation with all of the information about that's contained in any relation. It's all now in one big relation. So you can take many relations, and if you cross multiply them, you get one big relation that has any information um, that any of the relations have. Um, and then here was here is the projection. Uh, so we can instead of selecting the first and the third coordinate. Um, well, we can, sorry, instead of cross multiplying A times B, we can cross multiply A with, I'm writing here, this part of the screen. Um, instead of cross multiplying a with B directly, we can cross multiply A where we've renamed name to name two of B. So now instead of having the name column here, this will be name two. Now we can differentiate which name uh, came from which relation. And when we select now, we can select those where name equals name two. Is there a need to change the name or did you just do it um, because we can? Um, you really should change the name. Yeah, you should really change the name because the select, oh, I mean, well, it doesn't really matter. Um, this, yeah, either way, if it, it, it just depends on the type of select that you wanted to use. If you choose a select where you're referring to the columns by their coordinate number, then that works. Um, but if you want to use the names of the columns, then you can't select where name equals name if you don't do the rename, because it's unclear which which column is which. Um, so if you rename, then you can do a select referring to the names of the columns. But does that make sense? Like you can use the names of the, if you want to, select by the names of the columns, then you must use 
a rename operator. So there's here's the renaming, and that is to be able to differentiate those two columns when referring to them by their name. Um, if instead you do a select with the first coordinate and the third coordinate, then there's no ambiguity. And so you can go without the rename. Then. Um, if you didn't rename it, would it um, make two, like one name column like you have above? Yes, it would make two name name columns. Yeah, it would take, make two, two name columns. Wait, if you, if you don't rename it, it would make two name <clears throat> columns? Correct. Okay. Yeah, which becomes very messy to start. From that point onward, you can only deal with that relation um, uh, using the coordinates, um, which you can do. <clears throat> like, that doesn't... Uh, you can technically do everything you want, but it's just... <clears throat> um, if you use the rename, then uh, you can refer to things by coordinate or by name. So... I would recommend that one. <clears throat> I'm just a little confused. What does the select name equals name to mean? Oh, that's not a select. Um, oh, oh, what does the select name equals name to mean? <clears throat> okay, so the select, let me go back up here. The select looks at every tuple, or in this case, every row, and um, will filter out, or it will select only those rows that uh, meet some criteria. And if the row doesn't meet that criteria, then it gets filtered out. Um, it, 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 it does not get selected. So here we have um, a times a renamed B. And the select here, um, this is a, a predicate or a yeah, this here. This is a this is a Boolean statement. This is a yes or no um, statement. And that gets applied to each row. And if this Boolean statement is true, then that row gets selected. Here, <clears throat> the Boolean statement is that um, something in the name uh, dimension equals that in the name to dimension. So for the first row, this is true. And so this row would be selected to be among the results of the select operation. Here, John is not equal to Paul, so that does not get selected. Same thing with Peter and John and Peter and Paul. <clears throat> so after the select operation, only one row of this relation was selected. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I would recommend that you have like a sheet of paper with all these operations um, in front of you, just so when you're thinking about it, you have sort of like a list of <clears throat> operations to be considering. <clears throat> but uh, it's important that you're comfortable with all of these basic operations. Um, because when we're doing bigger queries, we're going to be combining these together. So I want to make sure that if, if there's any questions about how any of these work, um, we can go over them again quickly. That's the union, intersection, set difference, cross product, projection, select, and rename. OK, so the last class, I left you off with uh, this example. And I'll give you 
Uh, well, first of all, I'll ask, because I said that it would be a good homework, um, I'll ask if anybody came up with anything. So, I need to move things around a bit. Okay. <clears throat> so here we have four relations. And for queries, you don't need to know what, um, what the values are. So for these, for these relations, this part, um, where I'm actually giving examples, um, that is not required, okay? So <clears throat> for the eats and the serves, I'm not even writing what values there are <clears throat> because the values aren't relevant to the query. The only thing that the query looks at are the schemas. And um, all four of these relations have a schema. A relation must have a schema. And the schema is just the, the names and types of the columns. All right, so the, the, the person relation, its schema um, has three parts. Um, one is a name that's text, another is age that's an integer, and another gender that's text. OK. Um, so uh, for this stated in English query, find all restaurants frequented by at least one person under the age of 18. Um, is there anybody who already has uh, a guess for this? Nobody. Okay. Well, um, I guess you could yes. These are probably cross product person and frequency. Mm -hmm. And then um, you would have to select like the rows that are um, the rows in which the age is less than 18. Um, okay. Do a select here for, okay. Uh huh. Project the rows that are less than eighteen. Instead of select. Yeah. Oh well. <clears throat> a, 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 um, a project. You can't have a boolean statement for a project. Um, like a boolean, you can't have a true false for a project. A project is uh just chooses which columns to delete. So this is just like the, a name, um, not a Boolean. Where a select, um, uh, sorry, a select uses a Boolean um, to select rows. Well, and I guess you'd also have to select um, in which the name is equal to the name. Or like, um, the first column would be equal to the fourth column. Okay, so I'll do this. Um, and name equals name two. I'll add in a rename here. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> yeah, that's basically it. Um, missing just a little bit, but yeah, that's that's good. Um, all right. So when we cross multiply person and frequency, then we get I don't know. I'll put person and frequency. Um, we'd get some relation 
that has name, age, gender, name, and restaurant. Okay, so um, we are interested in restaurants that are frequented. Um, so here's people who are who frequent the restaurant um, combined with um, a relation that has something about uh, people and their ages. So that's why uh, we cross multiply. Um, the rename is going to rename this column to instead of name, it's going to be name to. <clears throat> um, let's see. I'll just actually start going through this. Um, so the cross multiply here. I won't do this for everyone, but because it's the first one, I'll do it. Um, John 16 male, he gets paired with Mary, uh, who eats at McDonald's. And then John 16 male also gets paired with Susan, uh, who likes to eat at Henry's. And um, then John um, also gets paired with John at McDonald's. All right, then Peter, all of his pairings. Peter is 19 and male. Um, he gets paired with Mary at McDonald's. Um, Peter also gets paired with Susan, who eats at Henry's, and finally Peter gets paired with John, who eats at McDonald's. Okay, so that is this part, what we've done so far. Cross multiplied and renamed one of the columns. Okay, the select. Um, I'll just cross out the ones that don't work. So um, under age 18, um, this, this first row, so far so good, but the name does not equal name to. So that is not selected. Um, the second row is also not selected for the same reason. Um, the name doesn't equal name to. This one uh, gets a pass. So that one is good. Um, well, here, I'll highlight it like this. That one's good. Um, this one, Peter is uh, too old, so I don't need to look at anything else. Okay, <clears throat> so after the select, this would return the relation name, age, gender, name to restaurant John who's 16 male John McDonald's hmm. and so I think okay whatever McDonald's um, all right uh, the only thing that we're missing is um, uh, uh, this is redundant in this relation. We don't need to return the, the column where we know that there's just going to be a repeat. So, oh, actually, <clears throat> um, this is just wanting the restaurant names, nothing else. So we can project the restaurant of this. And so that project will return just this. 
So these are the restaurants that are frequented by um, at least one person under the age of 18. Excellent. Any questions about this? Oh, okay. Great. Um, then, um, yes. Is there like other ways you can do it? Like, could we have done it using like a natural joy? Right. Um, so uh, again, yes, you could do, uh, sorry, the project restaurant, select those that are under 18 of person with a natural join frequency. Um, this is the way to do it with a natural join. Um, but for this class, again, I want you to avoid using this. Um, there's uh, a few reasons for it. One is that um, uh, I've, I've found that some students uh, just think that joins sort of work like magic and um, therefore can make some mistakes where they have some assumptions, where they uh, can make mistakes because they have certain assumptions or they're not assuming certain things. So um, uh, that's one reason why I want you to, for this class, avoid using uh, joins like this. Um, also, in, in reality, the, this join operation is being broken down um, sort of under the hood into this um, type of query. And uh, the reason why I think that's good to not only know, but by forming the thing yourself will help you appreciate why joins are expensive because joins this is the expensive part of a join is the is the cross multiplication um uh yeah this is like a, a quadratic um expansion in in space i mean <clears throat> these operations that they they cross multiply and so if you have you know um n things then all possible parents is going to be uh, n squared and if you're joining three things, then that goes up to n cubed. If you're doing four relations that you're joining, then that's n to the fourth. I mean, these are really expensive operations. And um, so knowing more about what's, how these things actually work and then also appreciating them um, uh, to maybe avoid them if, if necessary and stuff. Um, for this class, that's why um, I won't say that this is wrong because it's not wrong. It's correct, but you won't get full credit um, in this class if you write this type of query. Um, you'll get full credit for this type of query. Okay. Oh, professor. Yeah. I have a curiosity. So for the um, for the natural join, do we uh, have to specify, like do we have to specify which is the common attribute or does like and magically know based on the, the attribute being the same. Sorry, say that again? So if, um, just like out of curiosity, for natural joins, does a natural join require like you to specify which one is the common attribute or will it just join based off like the attributes that have this like an identical name? Yeah, so um, uh, the answer is sort of both. Um, you, uh, you have the capability of specifying, um, which attribute you want to be the same. Uh, and 
Uh, in fact, that's what you should do if you're joining relations that share more than one common attribute. Um, for example, if, if one has name, age, sex, and another is name, age, occupation, then if you're joining these, maybe you care about um, just the names that are right, or maybe you care about both of them. In this case, you can specify. So there's, I'm leaving this out, but you can um, sort of specify that uh, as a subscript to the, to the natural join. Otherwise, if you leave it blank, like this, then uh, by default, it will assume that uh, it's um, those where all, all common attributes have to be the same. Uh, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would, the subscript would just be something like name. Or, like you wouldn't have to specify name equals name two or. Right. Yeah. So here, because oh, there's only one. A uh, common attribute column, then yeah, it's it's understood that it's going to be name. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I try to oof, save some time. Sorry, my uh, application's acting up. I'm not able to switch. All right, so I'm going to have to uh, close it and reopen it up. So big. What? Let's see. Sorry, I just want to copy these relations. There we go. All right. Here, um, find the names of all females who eat either yogurt or salad or both. Okay. Um, so please take a few minutes and try to come up with um, what this query would look like. I'll give you guys like three minutes. In the meantime, I'm just going to be putting some stuff in the eats column. Not that it's necessary, but just to give people an example, like a concrete example to work through.
Okay. Uh, anybody got something they'd, they'd like to offer? Otherwise, I'm just going to pick out on somebody, or maybe a few people. OK, how about uh, Claire? Uh, Claire, you have a mic? We only have one Claire. Okay, how about Denise? Denise. Do people just like log in and walk away from their computers? I'm confused. Okay, uh, how about Jessica? Hi, I'm here. Hey. Um, so, uh, first of all, which um, relations do you think are relevant to this query? The projection and the select. Oh, I mean, of, of these four relations, person, oh, sorry. Place, eats, serves. Person um, and eats. Person and eats. Okay. Um, okay, so do you have a... Uh, a full query that you'd like to, to try or part of a query? Uh, I haven't like written any down, but then I'm just thinking that projection of the name and then the brackets would be the outermost part. And then I guess. Oh, uh, and then I guess like you could say. Um, so you're going to want to project the name because yeah. this is asking about the names, OK? Mm -hmm. And you're going to project something. Yeah, mm -hmm. so could you, so, can you can select the subset of like person, ta person and eats, uh, what's it called, the cross product of person and eats, and you select where the gender is female and the food is yogurt or salad? I mean, what is it? Yo yeah, yogurt or salad? OK. Um, by the way, um, this symbol here, um, this is a logical and. OK. OK. Um, uh, sorry, where the food is what? Uh, or or the, and what? Yeah, the food is either yogurt or salad. Okay, so food, yogurt, or food, salad. And again, just notational stuff. Um, this is a logical or. So then we, would, we wouldn't use like unions or intersections in this notation? No, 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 uh, because this whole thing here. This is a Boolean statement. So this is this is a true or false. It's something that you can evaluate to being either true or false. But a union and an intersection, those are things that you do on sets. Okay. So you have collections of things. And so this isn't about a set. It's it's about um, it making a true false statement. Yeah, so if gender is female and the food is yogurt or salad, um, then it's true. Okay. 
Professor, does this accommodate for like the and or because it says it can be either yogurt or salad or both? Uh, yes, it does. Yeah. Good question. I'll, I'll, I'll go through that in a, in a minute. Um, yeah, um, this is, huh? I'm sorry. I had a question Yeah. in this, like tape in like the table, like the person table, since you don't have like Amy and like her gender, would it, this return nothing? Uh, in this case, yes, this would return nothing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, if, if you like, I mean, if I added Amy is 25 and female, for example. So like um, that now it would return Amy? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, and the only other thing is I'll add in a rename. And name equals name to. So that's our Boolean statement. Okay. So yeah, sorry to throw a lot of notation at you guys, but thus is life. Um, so for a Boolean, this is an and, and this is an or, right? Um, for sets, you have these, which is a union, I'm sorry, an intersection and union. But this, this is for math of, of sets. Um, this is a Boolean math. So these are true false statements. Um, as far as this statement, food equals yogurt or food equals salad. Um, there was a question on if, if this um, would, if this captures either yogurt or salad or both. So if food is yogurt, um, but they don't eat salad, then this evaluates to one. Um, if they if they don't eat yogurt, but they do eat salad, that is also one. And then if they eat yogurt or salad, um, or they eat both, then that is also one. So that's why this part is necessary. That that statement that they can eat both of them, that's also okay, because that's the way that the or operator works. If if either the left or the right, either one is is true. And the whole thing is true. Okay. Yeah. So very good. That's the that's the query. Um, the takeaway from this query compared to the last is um, that yeah you can uh, well have a boolean statement of this kind. Okay. And these, these queries will be getting progressively uh, harder. Um, just to let you know. go back to this one just to again not that these should matter but um, 
Uh, okay, um, so just to compare um, this, or to differentiate the results of this query with the other, um, this would return both Amy and Jane. Um, because they're both females who um, eat either yogurt or salad. Um, where here, if we add Jane, um, this would only return Amy. Okay. Uh, so, uh, same thing, I'll give you guys three or four minutes to, to work on this. And please do, like, try to sit down and, like, work it out. That's, that's, the, that's the best way to, to learn this stuff. Your hint is that this query is longer than the previous query. Okay. Do you need a unique identifier to find out who eats both? No. I mean, everything you need is, is already in the relations. Name is not unique since there can be two people with the same name. Oh, in the eats table. Sure, that's um, that's okay. Um, you can have the the primary key be name and food together. So yeah, it's not. I mean, you can have a, a key that. Um, in this case, it's a, it's a composite key. Well, if we eat both, if the primary key is name plus food. Um, 
I guess we'll see. Yeah, how would we get people who eat both if the primary key is name plus food? Sure, so here, um, I could, I mean, you can always do this. You can always make the primary key be a composite key of all of the attributes. And that key is just saying that there will be no repeats in the table. There will, for every row, at least one part of it will be different. It's a lazy way to make keys. You can maybe do it a different way, but um, that's fine. And um, yeah, the, the, this doesn't have any influence on um, putting together queries. Okay, any ideas for this? Otherwise, like I said, I'll just pick out on people. Professor, I kind of did like the same thing for the last one, except um, I changed like the logical or to a logical and in the food part, but you said it was longer. Very good, Very good. yeah. So let's, yeah, that's, that's a good first try. Let me copy this and um, see what happens if we do that. Um, yeah, that's a really good first try. Oh, let me close out of this again. Gosh. Sorry, guys. One note isn't super stable all the time. Whatever. OK. I'll just write it after I share. OK. Um, OK, <clears throat> if we did this like the last query, um, let me just write it really quick. So, um, Uh, there's nothing about age here. Okay, um, is that right? Is this what you had? Is it Catherine? I think so. It was me, but I also like for the projecting name, I did names so it would do all of the columns i don't know if that made a difference i honestly didn't know what i was doing. <laughs> sorry you did you did which for the projection of what? the name i just did it for the names because it says find the names of all females so i didn't know oh. how to incorporate that into the thing so i just it would do all of the names i think i don't know if that made a difference oh um yeah so this is this means just return the name column um, and in this case, the, the, the name column would have, um, well, here, the, the result would actually only be one. But if there were two, then it would return, you know, uh, both names. I'll give, I'll give a concrete example <laughs> of this later. Yeah. Um, uh, well, here, actually, let me go back to the previous one for that. So here, we still have the project name, and this, um, this would return the relation name. And uh, Amy and Jane. So that's, that's what this would return. 
and that and the project would be i mean after the select you would have name um age gender name to food um with Amy, 25, female, Amy, yogurt, Amy, 25, female, Amy, salad, and Jane, 25, or 23, female, Jane salad. <clears throat> this is the result of the select. And then um, when you project it, this is the this is the projection. So the projection is is returning just the name column. And here, if there's repeats, they'll just be um, uh, combined into one. So even if there's more than one result, um, the, the project here is saying just return that one column. Okay. And right here, will we have to write in SQL for the homeworks test or will we have to write the logic behind it like you are now? Um, it will depend. Um, we haven't gotten to SQL yet, so um, I might ask for multiples of it. You know, how would you write this in um, relational algebra, and what is the SQL query for it? Um, okay. Uh, so this is taking a similar strategy to the previous question. Um, here, the difference is that we want to return females who eat both yogurt and salad. And so there was this attempt of making that work with the select query. Um, is there anybody who can say why this is a problem? Uh, is it because you can't have yogurt and salad in the same row? That's right. Yeah. So it, it, for every single entry, for example, this one, salad, um, it's true that it's salad, but it's not true that it's yogurt at the same time. That's, that's not the way that it uh, can work. So the a single entry... Um, cannot be two values at once. So that's the problem with this. For example, this, this row would get rejected um, because it's, it's only equal to salad, that part is true, but it is not equal to yogurt. Um, but we don't necessarily want to want to get rid of that row. The same thing here. For this row, that would be rejected for the opposite reason. Um, it is yogurt, but it is not salad, so that would get rejected. And, um, yeah. Professor, I just had a quick question with that. Mm -hmm. um, so for that to work, would, would salad and yogurt have to be in the same box on their food? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, so this is, um, actually, this is is always, always going to return false. For this example? Um, I mean, it's for, for anything. I mean, if you say, uh, just as a Boolean thing, I mean, if X is equal to A and X is equal to B, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that can only be true if A and B are the same. But right. here, if you're saying that... A is something different than B, 
then in all cases, this will always be false. Because mm -hmm. it, nothing can be two things at the same time. Right, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so Thank that's, you. that's, sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a logic. Uh, that's a, a consequence of, of the logic. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, very good. Um, so um, I'll call this attempt one. Doesn't work. Any other ideas? Two selects. Okay, how would that how would that work? Um, I don't know, but if you first do like select name equals name two and who equals yoga, and then you did like a select outside of that bracket. Oh, I see. I see. Um, yeah. Let me make another note about that. So this is sort of shorthand. Another way that you could write this is select name equals name two on a select where food is yogurt and a select where food equals salad of whatever person, yeah, of that stuff. So these, these are equal. Um, this is this is just in the green. That's shorthand. So instead of having to write it so long, you could say this and whatever that is, and whatever that is um, to keep it shorter. If you do expand it like this, then, um, for example, this select would eliminate. Uh, okay, so then that this field here would pass that select because food is equal to salad. But then when it goes to this select, um, this row would be eliminated because the food is not equal to yogurt. So yeah, um, same problem. This is just a longer way of writing it. You can write queries that way if you like. Um, but yeah, that. <clears throat> okay. Any other ideas? Okay. <clears throat> um, let me move this down. And your query. Okay. So um, again, the problem here is trying to apply a select uh, with two conflicting uh, uh, attributes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, take the union of two sets. Or I'm sorry, the intersection of two sets. Um, so what we're going to do is um, have a query of females who eat salad and intersect that with females who eat yogurt. Okay, so this is why it's a longer query. Um, uh, yeah, uh, because it's it's in uh, two parts. Can you cross eats with itself? Yes, yes, you can cross um, something with itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be another way of doing it. Oh, I see. Yes, you could do that. Um, so another option I'm seeing here. 
is if you did person cross eats cross eats. Yeah, you could do a select on this um, where you're checking, you know, I don't know, here maybe you rename um, food to food to um, for that eats. And then the select, you could see if food equals salad and food to equals um, uh, yogurt. Um, yeah, that would work. Um, and then I guess you'd have to rename. Uh, oh, yeah, so you'd have to do a few renames. So here, name to name two. And then here, you'd also have to rename name to, let's say, name three. Um, let's see. So would you have to do food equals salad or yogurt? And food to equals yogurt or salad. Uh, no need to do that. You could do that, um, but then you just get repeats. So you'd have, for example, Amy salad yogurt. And so then you'd be returning uh, something for that reason, but also there would be an entry, Amy yogurt salad. And that would be true because you're doing all possible pairings. Um, and so you'd sort of double count that way. But I mean, yeah, it would, yeah, you could do that too. I mean, the, the uh, multiple results are going to be um, combined anyway. So that would work too. I'm going to project him. Yeah, so here is um, option two. That's really good. I like that. Um, yeah, OK, so let me do uh, option one. Yeah, and actually, I should say this now. Um, in this case, you know, for a lot of queries, there's more than one way to do it. Um, and any way that's correct is correct. You know, I don't, um, unless I ask specifically for something, anything that you write um, that's correct is good. So um, here, oh, and... So select gender equals female. I'm trying to make it not be so ugly. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry, it's getting a little crowded. Um, let me try to put a little bit more space. Um, while I do this, are there any questions about this? Sir? Yep. 
Can you explain what is an aeronym to means? What is what? The name and the, there is an arrow pointing to the name too. There's an arrow pointed to on on the screen right now. Yes. Um, sorry. Where's the arrow? Oh, oh, this thing. Yes. Yeah, that's um. So this is row. Row is um, an operation for renaming. So here, this arrow means I'm going to rename the column name, and I'm going to name it name two instead. Let me go oh, up here. I'm going to rename it. Why do you want to rename it? Yes. So <clears throat> here, um, uh, in the yellow, uh, is when we cross multiply these two uh, relations together. And the reason why we rename it is so that this column name, we can differentiate from this column. And we can differentiate them according to, so, to the, the fact that these are now different. Now we can compare in, in the select we can see that name equals name two, and we can write this because we renamed things here. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Professor, uh -huh. are, you, um, are you missing parentheses for the first option? Am I missing what? Parentheses. Um, on the query we were just doing? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Like, should there be one after eats again? Both times? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, to close off that one for the projection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, again, uh, this is taking the women who eat, um, yogurt and the ones who eat salad and returning their intersection. Um, this would be a faster query because we're only um, doing a cross multiply w between two relations. Option two, you can uh, cross multiply three times or with th among three relations. You can cross multiply each of them. That is valid. That works. Um, but now, hopefully, yeah, you have a reason to maybe prefer this query, option one, over option two. Because option two, it might be a little bit slower. It will take up more space because you're cross-multiplying three things. And that is something that would be lost if you just did a, a join you would not see this expansion here. So that's one of the reasons why um, I like it. Uh, or I'm uh, wanting it to be done this way for this class. Okay, hey guys, sorry, I see it is 1142. So um, we're done, you can log out. Um, I will hang out if there's uh, any more questions. Otherwise, have a good weekend. So do you know when midterms are gonna be available? Yeah, um, I've already started grading them. Uh, let's see. Probably by this, for sure by this time next week. Um, I'll try to do it earlier than that. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a busy weekend for me. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay.